Hello and welcome to Wilcom's video short series for E4.0. Today I'm going to show you um, how to import in and again this uh, uh, is for beginners. I'm going to show you how to import uh, a graphic in and I'm also going to explain the different types of good and bad artwork uh, that you will get um, uh, daily from uh, clients. Uh, first of all um, inside my program um, I have the ability uh, to go in and import graphics inside my software. Um, I'm going to navigate over here to the file drop menu. I'm going to scroll down and here I'm just going to choose import graphic as I left click and based on where where the location is of your file, it could be your desktop, it could be a USB stick or anything like that, uh, but here I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to double click on uh, this design here in which is a bitmap file and the bitmap file uh, as you bring it in uh, this is what it looks like now um, th with this particular design as far as being able to go in we do have auto conversion tools that you can use uh, to go in and uh, create uh, designs uh, from the graphics if they're if they're simple enough to do that with and so for this particular design here I want you to take a look at uh, the lettering okay and as I zoom into it uh, you'll also notice something as well uh, the edges begin to look a little uh, fuzzy okay and this is what happens with the bitmap or raster files uh, especially if a customer sends you a design um, that they copy from the web which is say, about 72 dpi which is very bad resolution uh, because when you zoom into it you can't see the outlines just like you see here everything is pixelated okay I'm going to press zero here for a full view and so what I'm going to do I'm going to show you uh, three different types of artwork uh, that you will get um, daily from your, your clients and so I'm going to delete this design and I'm just going to go here and I'm going to open up uh, a recent and when this opens up I'm just going to show you the difference between uh, the good art and the artwork uh, that's uh, kind of in between and the bad artwork and show you how that uh, how that affects the design once you do a conversion this first one here uh, as I zoom into it you see how the pixelation is uh, really really bad okay and because of that it's going to be more difficult to do a conversion uh, from this type file here actually um, this next file here so this would be the worst artwork. Uh, some of it's uh, even worse than this as far as what the customer sends to you. And based on how complex that artwork is, uh, it's going to take you longer to do it the more complex the artwork is. Or if there's too much detail in a um, even a better looking design, if there's too much detail, uh, that means that it's going to cost you more time as far as being able to go in and do that. And in situations like that, when you're just getting started, uh, it might be best to uh, send uh, any uh, designs that are complex that you can't see something like this or something that's very detailed uh, to send it out to an experienced digitizer and have them do it uh, because uh, it takes it's a process as far as being able to go in and learn how to digitize uh, more complex designs these, these are relatively simple here okay, as I zoom out I'm going to zoom into this next one now you see the pixelation here is better it's still a bitmap file but you can still see the uh, edges here uh, that are a little bit jagged so it's a better resolution um, instead of using 72 they may have used uh, 150 or something like that for this resolution for this bitmap now I want to show you this is a graphic file here uh, that that will probably be sent to you uh, and sometimes there are copies uh, from copies and copies and uh, so I just wanted to show you what a graphic uh, bitmap would look like that you would probably get from your customers okay I'm gonna press O again now this next piece of artwork as I zoom in here this is a uh, vector art this is the best type of art uh, that you can get it's camera ready art and uh, it was designed by a artist that understands embroidery okay and so take a look at the G's here on this one and see how close these are here uh, 
if this was digitized just like this or converted just like that, uh, these are going to they're going to close up on the fabric actually, and the customer it'll be, it'll be the first thing the customer sees. Now take a look at this design that was actually created by a um, artist that understands embroidery and understands how the uh, process is done with the embroidery. Uh, they space the letters out with a good amount of space in between the characters here and you have a, just a nicer uh, graphic here with this vector and this is the ideal um, if, if you wanted to or if you would ask me what's the best type file that I need if a customer asked me um, it would be a vector file okay and that's what this is here and with this vector file also again most uh, artists when they're using a graphic program they may not understand uh, that uh, the letters need to be bigger the spaces need to be wider when it comes to creating embroidery using thread um, and so but if you have an artist that understands the embroidery process and who's also a graphic artist uh, you have a gold mind okay and so you'll see the differences here on how these uh, designs how they stitch out also based on uh, the artwork that you see here and a lot of the artwork that you'll get in it probably won't look like this unless you have an artist or your customer has an artist that actually creates the, the designs here uh, for the embroidery process okay so um, if you want to um, an idea would be like this if a graphic artist that didn't know anything about embroidery um, I would suggest that they would uh, once they create the original artwork for printing um, I would suggest that they uh, take that file and based on the finished embroidery size let's say it's uh, three and a half inches wide um, what I would recommend for the artist to do that's not familiar with embroidery is to go in and shrink that design uh, to the actual finished embroidery size okay and then add an outline around that that's about a millimeter uh, wide and then they could visually see um, how uh, much detail that needs to be taken out of that design actually and uh, so that's a, just a good exercise now um, we're gonna do a conversion for, for these files actually and so here you know inside the software we have a conversion tool um, and we call it the instant smart design tool now let's take a look uh, at how to convert these uh, designs here and as I zoom in we'll do we'll do this, we'll do this one first here actually so now I'm just gonna do the instant design this is just one way of doing a automatic conversion inside the software and when I say automatic conversion um, I don't mean that uh, anything that you put on your screen can be stitched for production because uh, once you convert the file is one thing and then having the file ready for, for production is something totally different okay and that means that once that file is created for stitching uh, further editing may be needed for that design in order for it to run um, for a smooth production run on your machine. So here with this tool, right here now is grayed out because nothing is selected on screen. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to select my file here first, my, my design, and now I can go in and actually click on the Instant Smart Design tool and let's see what it does. Okay, and so looking at this and let me do this also let me undo this we'll start with this one we'll start with the worst uh, image first and let's see how it does this one and this is just so here it goes in and you see this and you're probably not gonna send your customer anything that looks like that that is terrible okay now with the better artwork let's see what it does for this one and we'll click on instant smart design tool here so with this one uh, it did a better job okay um, and but it still still needs some work uh, deleting some items here on the screen okay now we'll navigate here to the best artwork let's see what it does for this one as we select it here and we choose this tool here instant smart design tool now take a look at uh, this design and take a look at this one we know the first one is not gonna that's just not that's just horrible okay uh, so with these at least you can work with the uh, one in the middle here but the absolute best artwork is the one 
uh, that's uh, created by a digitizer of graphics for embroidery okay and so here uh, much better much nicer there still may need to be some minor modifications uh, with the with some of the objects in the text here uh, but you can always go in and you could um, as far as just being able to digitize you can always go in and use the backdrop here as a template and digitize on top of it for instance uh, as I zoom in here uh, once you learn the different tools as far as digitizing uh, one of those tools um, would be uh, your, your satin stitch tools. I'm going to press S to hide the stitches here so that you can only see the outline. Now what I can something that I could do for this to fix it would be to navigate over and just digitize this in uh, as a separate item. Um, I could go in here and choose my column B stitch. The way that the column B stitch works you'll digitize a side A first like this. Press enter and then you'll digitize the side B like this okay this is what it looks like okay I'm gonna press S again now next I'm gonna go in and I'm going to uh, do my second one so here this will be let's go here I'm gonna go across and I'm gonna go down here I'm gonna press enter so that I can enter inside B like this press enter I'm gonna press S this is what it looks like okay the last but not least we'll go in and we'll do the last one here because it does need to be done in, in three different pieces here as far as the end uh, goes and as I deliver this one and press enter this is what it looks like so I can press H for my reshape tool and I can always go in I can uh, press S here I can change the uh, node points by pressing H here for reshape mode I can make this straight like this and it, of course it changes the appearance of it like that to make it look better um, I'm gonna click on my um, select tool and now for the um, I can click on the black template underneath now and I can delete that and I can select my end I could go in and change my color that you see here and let me also go in and let me simplify my template by clicking the X here to get rid of all of the colors that I'm not using okay so so now um, with as far as me editing it so now I can actually go in now and change the stitching order of this also and I can adjust and change the stitching order based on how I want this to sew out and um, I could start here we have a tool that's called the sequence tool and it allows you to select the items first and click the one two three and it uh, orders them in the order that you actually selected them so if I click the in first here I'm gonna press my control key down okay two three four five and I'm gonna navigate up top here I'm gonna click on one two three and it changes the stitching order for those uh, so it stitches from inside out and I do the same for uh, the growth one I'm pressing my control key down so that I can select multiple objects and I'm gonna navigate up top to my sequence and it goes in and it actually changes the uh, the, the stitch sequence here of the design so again with the type of designs that you bring in it will make a variable difference in the quality of the automatic uh, conversion tools inside the program here I'll need to go in and press H and here I'm just going in to move my starting points and my exit points this is my starting point here is going to be green the red crosshair is the stop sign that's where the stitching stops here and so in just going in and once that's all done once all the editing is finished I'll go in and I'll choose file and I'll choose save as and I'll save that design to a designated location and I'll save it 
as my EMB file. The EMB file is very vital. Uh, it's the uh, master copy. So once you save your designs, you're going to save them as EMBs first before you save them as DSTs. So um, the the you can always save a DS uh, you can always save a EMB file to a DST, but you can't go backwards to the original file. So again, uh, it's imperative that you save the EMB files uh, on your in your system. Those are the files that you want to keep uh, on your computer and back up because those are the files that allow you to make a uh, left chest design. Uh, it allows you to blow it up to a full back and make the necessary adjustments uh, for that uh, for the new size. That's going to do it. Um, and as always, um, you want to go in and run your stitch player. That's vital to run the stitch player because you always want to see um, how that um, how that design is going to stitch out. So again, uh, this is the uh, process here. These are the three designs. Uh, that types that you'll get um, in your shop and um, thank you very much for joining me today as always we ask you to join us at www.willcomeamerica.com thank you so much